Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for joining me here. For today's video, I wanted to give you an update on the whole flat mite situation. When I first discovered flat mites, I had a suspicion, but I wasn't positive. I filmed a video where I did scan a few plants and I showed you some of that data and I saw what were possible flat mites and in my like gut, I knew that I had them, but again, I wasn't positive. I didn't quite know how to use the microscope correctly. After that video that I filmed, I ended up scanning more of my Maranta Calithia collection and I ended up finding 100% that I had flat mites on some plants. I have some pretty cool images that I want to show you and what they look like up close and kind of what happened to the plants and where they're at now, how some of them are doing. And I wanted to give you my final thoughts on just how to go about it and maybe some other tips and tricks that I have or what I ended up doing. Flat mites are basically, they're called a false spider mite and they, you can't see them, you need a microscope. And so that's why I invested in a microscope so I could check my plants because I found some weird markings on some of my plant leaves and it turns out it was from the false spider mites, the flat mites eating away at the plant tissue. And I have a pretty bad infestation on several plants of mine. For some reason, they, in particular, they seem to like my Marantas and my Calitheas. I'm not sure who the culprit plant was or how they ended up in my collection. I'm assuming it's a new Calithea I brought home and it spread from there because I, at that time, that Calathea that I brought home, I believe it was the Calathea medallion. After I got that plant, I noticed the markings on that plant first, and that was like my initial suspicion. I don't think it was my Hoya Crimson Princess that had flat mites first, although I'm not sure. Or they could just be totally not related cases. I honestly have no idea. The biggest thing that helped me was the plant was stunted and growing. I didn't realize that at the time, but some of my Marantas just stopped growing and I didn't realize it was because of the flat mites. So if you have stunted growth on your plant, if you have yellowing, leaves are dropping, and again, like you're fertilizing, the plant you know, is receiving light and it should be growing when it's not, that is the number one sign that you could have some kind of mite, like bad mite, not necessarily even flat mites. It could be broad mites, which is a different type of bad mite. And again, you really need a microscope to see those and they don't produce a webbing like a normal spider mite. So that is number one. And then once you see kind of that discoloration on your plant leaves, like the markings, it's like someone's scratching. It's like mostly the middle vein on some plant leaves, then you pretty much have a bad infestation at that point if you see damage from them. For treatment, I initially used sulfur powder that I mixed up in a spray thing, a sprayer, and I was spraying with the sulfur powder mixed with water. I took them to my bathtub, I sprayed them, and then I was even wiping the leaves with a toothbrush uh, just to kind of scrape them and make sure that the I was like getting all the mites off because it does require a longer treatment just because their life cycle can last a while. I read a couple of journal articles and I will make sure to link those down in the, in the description because they might help you. But one of the articles I was reading said that they go through five different life stages and you know, can take like 45 plus days to even fully eradicate them because sulfur doesn't kill the eggs, it only kills the adults. And then once the eggs hatch, then there's gonna be more and more and more. So you do have to do a treatment like every week or so until you can finally get rid of all the life stages. I didn't really find sulfur to be any more effective than say a miticide or even just castile soap or a horticultural oil or even just water. Um, 
just like trying to knock as many off as you can. If you are gonna use sulfur, then I recommend wearing a mask, wearing gloves, just like making sure you're doing it in an area that has lots of airflow, just because sulfur is so dangerous if you inhale it and just the effects of it, like in an indoor setting. I just, I don't recommend sulfur anymore. Azimax is what I had switched to after sulfur. It's a miticide. I use it for spider mites sometimes. And again, you're gonna have to go through multiple treatments to eradicate the different life stages. The only thing with a miticide is mites can kind of get resistant to it after a while with consistent use. So if it's the only thing that you're using, you definitely wanna switch it up and um, not use it all the time because again, it just, they can get immune to it basically. So after I ended up doing the Azimax, I ended up just not even using anything else. I was just using Castile soap and water and just making sure to hose the plants down every week or so. I kind of got lazy with it and fell off the bandwagon and I did not end up checking other plants in my collection. I checked a few here and there with my microscope, but it was too much for me. I just recommend doing what is best for you in your own peace of mind. If you wanna check every plant in your collection and go through with a microscope, make sure there's no pest on them, by all means, do what is going to be best for you and your sanity. I just have over 200 plants and I just, I could not check all my plants. I was going crazy. <laughs> and then the thought of having to bring all my plants, spraying them all down every week, it was just too much work for me. It's just something I didn't want to do. So the plants that I knew had them, I just kept them separate away from the other plants in my collection. And the other plants seemed to be happy. They seemed to be growing. I didn't notice like any weird markings on them. So I ended up turning to beneficials at that point because I felt like if there were some other flat mites, the beneficials would take care of them. I pretty much just use beneficials now. I don't even really use Azimax anymore. I just find beneficials to be an effective way to target and treat plant pests without having to use pesticides. I've used a couple different kinds of mites and they can target flat mites as well as spider mites and I have used nematodes. There are other beneficials out there that target certain kinds of pests better, and I'm still kind of figuring that out with me. I highly encourage the use of beneficials. It takes a little bit of getting used to knowing that there's tiny mites all over your plants, but they're good mites and they're really doing a good thing. You don't have to like spray your plants off, you don't, I mean, obviously you want to spray and clean your plant leaves every once in a while, but you don't have to just go crazy wiping plant leaves, transferring pests with wiping leaves with gloves. And also just make sure to clean your hands too, because I felt like maybe I was transferring them by like, because I'm such a leaf petter, by like touching leaves and then like touching another leaf. They could have gotten on me and I could have transferred them. They could be on surrounding surfaces by the plant that had them, but I, I honestly think they're mostly pertained to the plant leaves themselves. I don't think like my cats are spreading them around. I don't think they were on like walls or other surfaces. I think I possibly spread them around to plants by again touching and by propagating a lot of my Maranta together. I took several cuttings and had like all the different cuttings in the same vessel together. So I think the flat mites got on some of my other plants when I added the props back in. So that's how I think I spread them to my Maranta in my collection. <laughs> so basically just to take away from this, if you think you have an issue, if you think you have an invisible mite, invest in a microscope. It's like $25 or so on Amazon. It's worth it. It's really easy to use. You just download an app. It connects to your phone through Wi-Fi. You have a video you can record and take pictures on right on your phone. It's super easy to use. I explained how to use it in my other video I made, so I will make sure to link that other video too. And I will link the exact microscope that I use down below. I will make sure to leave some information about beneficials as well, like which ones I think work better for uh, flat mites and broad mites if you want to try them out for yourself. And keep in mind when you are 
wanting to transfer and switch to using a pesticide to like using beneficials, just make sure that there's a good two to three weeks time lapse in between because pesticides will kill beneficials. Uh, so you don't wanna combine or mix the two. They're not gonna work together, unfortunately. So just give a several weeks time frame from when you last used pesticides before you put the beneficials on your plants. So if you think you have a problem, definitely invest in that microscope. Treat your plants according to what's going to be most effective for you. For me, just hosing plant leaves off, checking them every week, let alone having to do everything else plant care wise, it was just too much work for me. So I just invested in, like I said, beneficials and let them take care of the problem. And some of my plants are starting to grow back. Some have grown back and have done well, and some are still a little bit stressed. My calathea medallion leaves ended up burning and drying up, which I think it was from me rubbing the plant leaf with my toothbrush with the sulfur. It was just, it was way too harsh for some of those plants. Or maybe I just did a too strong of a dilution. And they're just very stress sensitive plants anyway, which made them kind of go dormant basically. I had several plants die back and some are still struggling. And yeah, and I'll kind of tell you my plan with those. So yeah, do what's best for you and what's gonna be easier for you. I think every person has their own way of treatment and what works best for them. Beneficials is what I highly recommend using and what has helped my sanity some days. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you what they're looking like. If you have any questions at all about flat mites, definitely let me know. I know like when I first discovered them, I was really stressed and I kind of flipped out. I was going kind of paranoid and I thought I had to use sulfur based on other people's recommendations. And I heard like you have to treat once a week for six weeks in order to fully eradicate them. I just, I don't know, I just encourage you to just take a step back. Your plants are gonna be okay. It is just a mite. You can get rid of them. Don't go crazy and stress yourself out like I did. Cause I know plant pests, you're just like, sometimes they can just, I don't know, just overwhelm you, especially when you think that your entire collection is affected. So I'm here to tell you it's gonna be okay. Don't flip out. You can treat them and your plants will be fine. If some do stress and go dormant, it is okay. They will grow back in some time. So just do your best and just know that it will be okay. This is a setup that I did after I took them all down off the table. I have some in here and I actually have three of them in my plant room that I will show you. And then the other one is in my bathroom. So these all had flat mites. You can see my orbifolia is still very, very sad. I think it's going dormant. I haven't had a new leaf in maybe three months and I've lost several leaves. They just keep dying back. I've had some mites on this plant, beneficial mites, but um, I didn't put any on it this last round, so I might do that this time and yeah, just see what happens. This was definitely a very sad plant loss, you know, cause it had thrips as well over the summer last summer. And it was so happy at one point. And then, you know, it just got really sad and stressed. So that is on my repot list. I'm gonna try and get this plant happy again. I might even put her outside just to hopefully prompt growth on her. But yeah, I do want to repot her. These three up here that are leafless. So I have two Calathea medallions and one Calathea pinstripe. This is still the original soil. I did not change the soil, but I think that I will change the soil. Um, possibly, but I don't know yet. Because the only reason is I did not change the soil on this Maranta and it is growing back in beautifully. That is a very positive flat mite growth that I'm just super happy about. This Maranta, Kirschiovana, was a huge Maranta in my collection and it was covered in flat mites. It was probably one of the worst flat mite infections out of all my plants in my collection and it completely died back. This is the growth that I'm getting on it currently. Look at how big and beautiful and happy these leaves are. It is growing away. 
this has all grown back in like the matter of the last two or three weeks. So that's the only reason I'm thinking about like not stressing the plant more and changing the soil just because it will grow back in some time. Marant to have rhizomes, which are little potato looking things off their roots. So they will produce new shoots and grow in some time. You can kind of see there's a new shoot coming up there. These are all basically new shoots that have popped up. I did take cuttings off of this one and I have propagated, which are here. This one is some cuttings that had flat mites that I potted into soil. And it hasn't done too much yet. It does have some new growth coming in there that you can see in the top, but I haven't noticed any kind of flat mite damage or anything since. I think it's just gonna take some time to produce new leaves. And these are some more cuttings that are very rooted that I was planning on potting back into one of these pots. So I'll probably end up doing it together maybe with that one. So these three here, I believe this one is my pinstripe calathea. And there is a new shoot here that you can see. You see that green stem there? And it has popped up several new growths. As soon as they pop up, they die back. So I'm hoping this one will continue to shoot for me. I don't know why they keep dying back once they pop up. Same with this one. You can see there's a new growth here popping up. And that one had popped up and then it died back. And this is the other Calathea medallion. And you can see there's a new shoot here that's starting to come up. And yeah, I've had several new shoots pop up on here, but again, they've died back. I don't really know what my plan is. I'm kind of just letting them do their thing and just kind of going from there. I do believe I do want to repot my Orbifolia just to downsize the root system um, and just see if I can get her growing back. I have a feeling she's going to die back and look like those plants. And you know, this one is growing back from nothing. So it makes me confident that they will grow back in some time. And my big, beautiful uh, Calathea Makeoyana grew back from a pile of dirt just like those. So it does happen. They will grow back in some time. So don't give up on them. We are in my bathroom. And I will say this Maranta did not catch flat mites, you know, cause it's been in my bathroom the whole time. But this is another Maranta that has grown back from basically nothing. This one here, this is another Kershiovana that I basically took cuttings from off of the same plant. And you can see how much it's growing back. And this one, you know, was off the same plant, so it did have flat mites, but they're clearly gone. The plant is clearly happy. It is clearly growing, growing. So definitely super excited about that. I may end up potting my two Kershiovanas together to get my big, beautiful full one back, but I don't know. I don't really want to mess with her because she is so beautiful. Hi, Luna. Hi. <laughs> Hi, girlfriend. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Walking into my plant room, I have two Marantas down here that did have flat mites. And my Maranta, red Maranta here, did have flat mites. So I have, currently I have mites, like beneficial mites on these plants. This one you can still see, I have sulfur residue, the white markings. I have tried to like rinse them off, but I'm having a hard time getting some of them off. And you can see that middle vein there, how it's discolored. If it's gonna focus there, that's flat mite damage compared to one that doesn't have flat mite damage. I don't think she would have any more flat mites. <laughs> At least I'm hoping not because she is pushing a lot of new growth. So she does seem happy. I have lost quite a bit of leaves on her though, just from, I think just having flat mites, just being stressed and just the treatment with sulfur and everything. She seems happy now. So I'm not like, I'm not super concerned. You know, she does have some damaged leaves still, but we'll see. I didn't want to cut them all off and basically like leave her with nothing. So I think I'm just going to let the mites continue to work and, you know, to take care of any that are still left on the plant. This was one of the first Marantas that I saw the flat mite damage on. This is my silver band. 
and pretty much all the new leaves are happy and healthy. It still has some of the old like damaged leaves, but pretty much I feel like everything is okay on her now. I don't think there would be any more flat mites on this one either. I mean, she is yellowing a lot of leaves and pushing out a lot of new leaves at the same time. So again, I think she's fine. Hi, Lulu. <laughs> yeah. Hi, cutie. You're so cute, Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I believe she's fine. I'm not like too concerned. And she is kind of isolated down here by herself where I don't think that it would be spreading anywhere else. And again, this is the original lemon lime that had flat mites as well in kind of the same situation. She is growing new leaves, a lot of new growth, and a lot of the older growth has died off. But this one didn't get super stressed. But again, I'm treating with beneficial mites and hopefully they will take care of any residual mites still left. I'm just letting them do their thing and I'm not gonna stress. I mean, obviously she is happy because she's pushing new leaves. Oh, I forgot about this one. I have one more Maranta. This was another like quite a sad loss is my variegated Maranta. This one, the variegated one was covered in flat mites. And this one is doing very well growing back. Those are all new leaves, which makes me super excited. This is all that's left of my variegated Maranta. Minus the prop that I took. I do have a prop growing back too. I was very sad when that one decided to lose all the leaves too, because I loved my variegated Maranta. This is the prop that I have here. You can see it's in stratum in a little cute little thrifted vessel and it's pushing some new leaves. So I am gonna pot this one in with the other variegated one to make a fuller pot, but you can see the roots there in there. So yeah, I don't see any more flat mite damage or anything on this one either. The only one that I'm really concerned about, I would say would be the red Maranta again, and then probably like the silver band down there, just because they still are losing quite a bit of leaves and pushing new growth. I think it's just gonna, again, take some time. I could scan them for my own peace of mind, but I feel like if I scan them again and I find flat mites, I'm just going to kind of go paranoid, so I'm not even gonna deal with it. I'm just going to let the beneficials take care of them. I may rescan them at some point, we'll see, but I think for now they are still growing, so it makes me think that they're doing just fine. <laughs> and here is the big, beautiful uh, Calathea Mekoyana that grew back from a pile of dirt. She did not catch any flat mites and she was right next to the plant. My variegated Maranta was right next to her that was covered in flat mites. So they did not get on her and she was right next to her. So I don't know. And that one was, these were all three in this spot and none of them caught flat mites. So that's the update with the whole flat mite situation. I, Again, like all my other plants seem happy, they seem growing. I'm not gonna bother checking any of them. I hope this was helpful for you. And again, sorry it took me so long to get this video up. I just have been meaning to do it. I don't know why it took me so long. If you have any questions, let me know. I will have the microscope link down below and I'll have some journal articles on flat mites as well as kind of the beneficials that I recommend using for flat mites. So leave me a comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys in my next one.